So we've already spoken about uh, installing PF firewall module in the uh, FreeBSD 10.3 kernel. Uh, if you remember from the last video, uh, basically we installed PF. Um, we updated our rc.conf uh, file, included the PF module, so we enable PF. Um, we, used, we used PF logging to just test it, make sure it was working, but we now disabled PF. So we enabled the PF here, and then we have a file called PF, uh, PF, um, .com which is actually the uh, which is actually the file itself which expresses how we're firewalling the server so we've created some definitions for example the IBG0 ICMT echo request uh, don't worry about this stuff you guys can look at the handbook uh, to get the details on what scrub set and anti spoof are but a couple of features we're going to talk about in the new firewall are these tables. So as you can see we have our standard firewall here so we've got port 22 for SSH, 25 for submission, 80 for web, uh, 143, 144 so on and so forth for the IMAPs. A couple of other for example we have the SIF port here that only can be accessed from our local subnet and then we of course have our final block call at the bottom but what's new in our uh, configuration you'll notice are these two tables so basically tables are like sets of IP addresses or sets of hosts that you want to block so I've created two test sets of tables one is blocked IPs which basically is a persistent table and it's located in this file. So I've created a file with a set of IP addresses in them or actually subdomains that I really don't want to receive any mail from. And I, and I have the firewall check to make sure and block anything from there. The other table I created, which is also a persistent table, which basically means once the computer restarts, it'll actually reload the table from before, is fail to ban. And fail to ban basically is a script that's going to go through and check all of my logs. And it checks my logs for certain keywords, finds the IP address of the, the IP address of that host, and then adds it to this table as we move forward. And I'll go ahead and show you exactly how that's going to work. So today we're going to focus on this fail to ban block. So the first thing we do is we create the table in our firewall rule then we create a block such that um, any incoming on this external interface which is IB, IGB0 um, coming from this table fail to ban to any port is going to get blocked. In other words any incoming connection from the fail to ban table is going to get blocked. Well what is the fail to ban table? Well, let's take a look at that for a second. Okay. So if I do a uh, PF control T for the table, right? T for fail to ban, and then T show, so show me the contents of that table, this is what I get. And as you can see, these are a set of IP addresses that this, this script has gone and found and inserted into the table. Now, if you look at my other table, let's go with uh, blocked IPs, right? You can see this is a much larger set of subdomains or, or networks that I've added that are being blocked from accessing my IMAP server. So it, these are ones that I find through our honeypot. So if I look at a honeypot address and I see a lot of a um, lot of false emails coming from a given subdomain or an IP address, we block it both on our gateway, our SMTP gateway, and our uh, IMAP server as well, just for security. But these these ones are specific IP addresses that failed a login. And where do I get that information from? Well, if I look at uh, my messages folder, right? So Zcat, because it's this is a, a archived message. Uh, 
message log. So zcat, the message log, and I'm just going to grep for bad, right? And as you can see, uh, just in May 2nd alone, I had all of these bad login attempts from all of these IP addresses. They're trying to authenticate, but they're trying to authenticate, um, and their authentication is failing. Now, given that we have a very controlled domain, and I know all of my users, and I've set up all of my users' computers, I would never expect one of their emails to uh, to fail bad login. So once we started seeing this, we decided we need to start blocking it. And these IP addresses, so I look for this word bad login and I do it. So instead of writing a script to all do all of this stuff, there's a product called fail to ban. Okay, fail to ban. And fail to ban basically does exactly that. It, it You can create it's a script that can run on a regular basis. It actually runs as a daemon um, that can go in through based on different filters and different uh, different filters and different modules and find information and based on that information create in our case add the IP address to our tables. So how does this all work? Well for one all you have to do is come to your uh, come to your root access uh, and do a package install py27 dash fail to ban. Once you do that, it'll go through and it'll install the package. And as you can see, I have it already installed. So from once you have it installed, if <coughs> if you go under user local uh, local etc fail to ban, you have an entire subdirectory of uh, the configuration. So you have actions you have fails to ban and then you have JLD and filters so each of these is an aspect of the product so if you go into actions if you CD into actions right and you do an LS you see you have all of these actions and one of these actions in our case so you have different um, different uh, for example IPFW you have IP filters you have IP tables as an action if you look at all of these they do something differently so in this case Let's look at pf.conf, and as you can see, let me do it with Vim because it highlights it better. So here are the action start, action stop, action check. Now action ban, all it does is it runs pf control minus t, giving it the table name, add minus t add, so it's going to add the IP address slash 32 to this table. Action unban is going to do the same thing except it's going to delete and what is the table name well the table name it's using right now is fail to ban that's why we call the table fail to ban in our if we look at our uh, IP FC control we call that table fail to ban right so this action has already been defined we really don't have to do much now if we go back and we look at the actual fail to ban.d directory, so cd fail fail to ban.d directory, and we do an ls, oh sorry, wrong one. I actually need to go to filter.d. We can see we have all of these filters as well. So you have filters for Apache, you have filters for Courier, uh, you have filters for Cyrus. And in fact, since we use Cyrus, if I just do a, um, and I do it in Vim because it colors it nicely, um, as you can see, it includes the common comp, and then it has these de de uh, definitions. So the daemon is the Cyrus IMAP daemon, and in this fail grep. So this fail grep says anything that has this bad login, find that host. Um, and look for look for basically authentication failure or user not found. So it's going to regex on this. It's going to check this regular expression through the logs, and it finds anything that matches. It's going to use this host um, as the input to the IP uh, to the IP and the action. So all we really have to do, and this is all pretty much predefined for us we go into jail.d and jail.d is where we actually create the uh, the functions that we want to the, 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 the sort of the routines that we want to have done in other words uh, 
it has all the mechanisms and all the pieces you need to create the functions that you want. It doesn't actually have any of them pre-created for you. You have to tell it what you want to uh, use. So from here, if I just do a more Saris mapp.pf, and this is one that I've created. I created this file. Um, so you would just go in here, do vi Cyrus IMAP, and then you would define this. I gave it the name Cyrus IMAP PF. Enabled is true. The filter I want to use is the Cyrus IMAP filter. That's the filter that had the regular expression in it. The action I want it to take is on PF, right? So I want it to use the PF control function when it's taking an action. And the log it's going to check is var log messages. It's going to find it every 600 seconds. The max retry I've set to 1 because we really shouldn't ever have uh, anything fail. And the ban time is 360 seconds. So basically, it's banning them for about uh, 3,600 seconds or three, uh, what is that, three, three hours uh, or so. Um, and basically what it's saying is, it's going to go through and it's going to look at this, this table. And as it finds this table, uh, as it goes through this table, anything that matches the Cyrus IMAP filter, which was the bad login, it's going to do a PF action on it. It's going to use the band action to do it. And then if nothing happens with that after 360 sec or 3,600 seconds, it's going to unban the IP address. And that's why the table currently is so small, because it's only the, the IP addresses that have been operating for the past three hours hammering away at our server. So again, if we go up here and we take another look at this, now that we know what this uh, action is, so if we look at this, so all these bad logins, right, these were defined in this, uh, in this filter, right? It was filtering on CF bad login here, right? In this filter, it was CF bad login. And the action it's taking is the action defined here in PF, right? So action ban, it's using SBIN control, adding it to this table, fail ban, okay? And then the rest is just the timers. And from there, once you, again, look at your table, you can see that these were the IPs that were blocked for the past three hours, for some, somewhere within the last three hours, these IP addresses attempted bad logs and bad logins to our system. So that's basically fail to ban in a nutshell. There's some great tools out there that you can look uh, online for fail to ban. Just do um, fail to ban if you want the generic stuff for Linux. Uh, I think there's Windows modules as well. There's all kinds of uh, different uh, distros for it that you can use. Um, if you want to look for FreeBSD, there's actually some pretty good uh, Google uh, articles on it as well. Just do FreeBSD, your version 10.3 in our case, uh, fail to ban. And there's quite a few nice articles written on how to do this as well there. Um, I just wanted to give somewhat of a demonstration of it here and how we have it set up uh, so that you guys can enjoy it. Definitely recommend this. And again, it can work for Apache web servers. It can work for IMAP servers. It could work for SMTP servers. You could do it on things that, you know, anything that has uh, bad reverse lookups. There's all kinds of stuff. You can make your own actions. You can make your own modules. You can make your own filters. It's pretty extensive. It's pretty decent tool set. Um, so I definitely recommend for people to uh, have a look at it. Uh, thank you. Thanks again for watching this video and uh, enjoy.